Hey guys, I have something I'm really excited about. I'm starting up a new series on how to lose fat. All right, is it clickbaity enough for you? I know there's a bunch of these out there, but mine is gonna be way different than anybody else's for a few reasons. Uh, one, I'm gonna give you all the tools and actually teach you about how fat loss works, all right? And I have the background, I have a BS in biochemistry, I have a PhD in nutritional sciences, not only can I explain it from a general point of view, but I can also get you guys into the actual biochemistry and physiology of how fat loss works. Now we're gonna start broad for our first episode. We're gonna talk about energy balance. And you may have also heard of this as calories in, calories out. And there's a very popular movement now to kind of debunk calories in versus calories out. So let's talk about what energy balance actually is. It's a balance just like it sounds. So if we have our balance here, we have energy input versus energy output. If those two are the same, if your energy input is the same as your output, you'll maintain your weight. If your energy output is greater than your energy input, you will lose weight. And if your energy input is greater than your energy output, you will gain weight. Let's talk about all of them. So your energy input is quite simply how many calories you consume per day. Okay, that's it. That's the long and short. As far as your energy output, this includes your basal metabolic rate. So your basal metabolic rate is essentially how many calories you expend. So calories are a unit of measurement of heat, okay? They're a unit of measurement of energy. And so when we talk about calories, we're talking about energy. We're talking about how much energy something requires. So when we talk about basal metabolic rate, that is the amount of energy it takes basically to keep the lights on, all right? This is what you burn just to keep your organs functioning, your brain working, your body. So when they measure this, you're basically immobile, um, laying down and you're not moving, but you're not asleep. That's your basal metabolic rate. And for most people, that accounts for about 60% of the amount of calories you expend every day. Next on our list is NEAT. And NEAT is basically um, non-exercise uh, non activity, okay? So that's like what I'm doing right now. I'm up, I'm moving around, I'm waving my hands around, I'm talking, I'm expending energy doing those things. But I'm not specifically exercising. You could also put this in the category of like light walking, uh, maybe not like a brisk walk, but just kind of the walking you do day to day, those sorts of things. So just moving around, going through your day to day tasks, that's neat. And then uh, EA is exercise activity. So that's the amount of activity or out of amount of energy you expend doing your daily exercise. Um, and then you have TEF, which is the thermic effect of food. And the thermic effect of food is about 10% of your daily caloric output or your daily energy output, okay? And that's slightly modifiable. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. But if we want to lose fat, this side has to exceed this side. And if we do that, if we either, there's two ways we can do this. We either increase our output or we decrease our input or both, which is what most people do. They do exercise, they do cardio, and they decrease their calories when they're trying to lose fat. And what happens is when you do this, you start to tip this. So now that we're, if we're increasing our exercise and we're decreasing our calorie input, we start to go like this. because it is weighted more towards output, okay? Now your BMR, not super modifiable. Um, it does modify a little bit, we'll talk about that in a bit. Neat, very modifiable. Exercise, very modifiable. TEF, slightly modifiable, okay? What your biggest control is, is your calories in, your energy input. 
So if you say drop, a, if you're at maintenance, and we'll talk about that in a minute, if you're at your maintenance calories where you are not gaining and not losing weight on the overall, because everybody fluctuates day to day, but on the whole, if you're maintaining your weight, if you then drop a thousand calories out of your diet, you're going to be in a negative energy balance because your input is going down. So even if our, even if our output did not go up, if your energy goes down, you tip this scale and you start to lose weight. Now, you can also do this. You don't have to decrease your energy, right? If we have an actual scale, if we increase our activity by an hour a day, this goes up and we start to lose, okay? Just like any scale, if you have a weight, if you have an actual scale, if you put more to one side versus the other, it will start to tilt, okay? So that is how we are creating, this difference is your calorie balance or your energy balance. So this difference of where these are is your energy balance. And so if we were at maintenance, we drop a thousand calories out, we're in a thousand calorie deficit. Now, what I wanna make very clear, when we talk about calories, calories in versus calories out, a lot of people believe that this has been debunked because, for example, there's research data that shows if you eat a high protein, high fiber diet, at the same total calorie intake, you actually lose more weight and lose more fat. That's not a huge amount more, but it is significant, okay? Well, why is that? If it's really calories in versus calories out, well, remember that while it is calories in versus calories out, the calories out portion of that equation is not straightforward. It's complicated. And even the calories in is to a certain extent. I'll talk about that in a second. But let's look at exactly what we talked about earlier, thermic effect of food, okay? If we eat, if we increase our protein intake, if we're talking, now I'm not talking about somebody who eats a high protein diet already. If you're already eating a high protein diet, just adding a ton more protein isn't gonna do this. But if you're somebody who eats, you know, 60, 70 grams of protein a day, and you go up to 100, 150, 200, you're gonna get a greater increase in what we call thermogenesis. That is because the metabolism of protein uh, requires energy, okay? Protein is about 30%, the uh, protein has about a 30% effect on TEF. Carbohydrate is about six to 8%. I apologize. I keep wanting to put the wrong letter on there. And then fat is about two to three percent, okay? I'll get into this stuff a little bit later, in one of our later episodes. But, so if we eat, and then fiber, fiber actually is about the same as protein. So if you're eating a high protein, high fiber diet and you're if you're keeping your calories the same so if you eat 2,000 calories but one person is eating 200 grams of protein a day and the other person's eating 100 grams of protein a day and the person eating 200 grams of protein a day is also eating 40 grams of fiber versus the other person eating 15 grams of fiber you're getting a much greater effect on TEF and so your TEF goes up you have to expend more calories to get calories out of the foods that you are consuming. And so that tips this more towards negative calorie balance. That doesn't mean that calories in versus calories out is a myth. It just means that the calories outside of things can be affected by the macronutrient composition of your diet that you choose. Now, I've also had people say, well, I was eating in a calorie deficit and I didn't lose weight. If you were eating, if you were eating at a certain level and you didn't lose weight, by definition, it was not a calorie deficit. By definition, it doesn't matter what a calculator told you online, it doesn't matter what your doctor told you, it doesn't matter what a magazine article told you. That is not a calorie deficit 
for you. Keep in mind, all these equations online, like Harris-Benedict, the Mueller equation, uh, catch McArdle, they're all just estimations of what your maintenance calories should be. So you can figure out what your maintenance calories are by one of these equations, subtract a certain amount of calories from it, and maybe not lose weight. Because for you and your individual metabolism, it may not be a calorie deficit. But any diet out there works by creating a calorie deficit. Keto works by creating a calorie deficit. You're cutting out an entire food group. And when you're not eating any carbohydrate, it can be difficult to overeat. Now it can be done. If you're eating quote unquote clean, you're eating high fiber, high protein, more voluminous foods, it's easier to reduce total calories. So any of these diets work through creating a calorie deficit. Okay, and if you aren't creating that deficit, then you're not going to lose weight. Now, calories in is also a little bit complicated as well, because even though it says a certain amount of calories on the side of a label or a certain amount of protein, carbs and fats, those labels have a lot of error in them up to 10 to 20 percent. So you may be thinking that you're eating 2000 calories a day. And you actually could be eating 2200 or 1800. That can make a difference. Okay. So the calories in, so you can see if you were choosing, if you were thinking you were consuming 22 or 2000, but you're actually eating 2200 and you're choosing low fiber, low protein diet. If you switched to a diet that for whatever reason, the labels on the side of the food were a little more accurate and you're eating higher fiber, higher protein, now you may start losing weight. That's why many people think that calories in versus calories out is a myth because they did what they thought was a calorie deficit and didn't lose weight, but it wasn't a calorie deficit. Now, a lot of people will take this and run too far with it. They'll say, well, you can eat as much protein and fiber as you want. You don't have to count it or clean foods. You don't have to count. That's not true. Okay. Every protein, you don't get something for nothing. Protein is harder to store as fat, but it doesn't mean it can't be. And while protein can be stored as fat, it is difficult. There's a lot of steps between protein intake and being stored as fat. But what's more likely is if you're over consuming protein, that's going to create a caloric cushion for those carbs and fats you eat to be stored as fat. So that's what's more likely. But it is harder, okay? And it does have a 30% effect on TEF compared to two or 3% for fat, six or 8% for carbohydrate. So it's much greater, same thing with fiber. But they're not free, okay? Let me give you an example that maybe many of you will understand, all right? Tax write-offs, tax deductions. A lot of times we hear from people who don't know what they're talking about that you need to spend more money in your business because you need tax deductions. Well, you should spend more money you should spend money on things you need for your business and write those off, but you shouldn't just create expenses out of nowhere. Let me give you an example. If you made a hundred K in a year, all right, after expenses and you paid taxes on that, that's usually about 30% tax rate. So that's 30 K of taxes. You subtract that your net after tax, 70K. Your net extra tax is $70,000. All right? Now, let's say we decide to create $20,000 of expenses because we don't want to pay tax on $100,000. So we have um, 80K after expenses and we pay. 30% tax on that. Now it, it might be a little bit lower. In fact, let's say it's lower. Let's say it's 25%. So you bump down a tax bracket. That would be uh, 20K in taxes, okay? So you paid less tax. You only paid 20,000, but guess what? Your net is now 60K. 
So yeah, you paid less tax, you also made less money. You also had less money to take home because you created expenses. It's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, okay? It's similar with protein and fiber. They're not free, okay? The tax is still gonna come due on those calories. Now, are you paying less? So, are you paying less here than if those expenses were a personal expense that were after tax? Absolutely. So if you can make a, something a business expense compared to a personal expense, it's better, okay? Because you're not gonna pay tax on it, on that money. But it's not a great idea to just create the expenses out of nowhere, all right? Now I'm sure there's some accountants out there with crazy methodology that are gonna say I'm actually an idiot, but for the purposes of this, it just, it makes sense. The, so with protein, you know, you can eat 500 grams of protein a day, but if you're just eating that because you feel like it's free, you're still gonna be prone to storing body fat. Now, are you gonna store as much body fat as if you were overeating 500 grams of carbohydrate? No, but you can still store body fat, and that's the main point. So, one other thing I wanna talk about is that maintenance calories and deficit calories, they can change, okay? They can change over time. This is not set in stone. Your maintenance calories can change. If you've ever done a diet, you have probably noticed that after a few weeks or a few months, you're eating a certain level of calories, you stop losing weight. Now, nothing magic happened. What happened was your NEAT, which is very, very modifiable, up to 500 calories a day modifiable, went down. Your BMR went down, okay? Because lean body mass and fat mass may go down, and those can decrease BMR, plus metabolic adaptation. Your thermic effect of food goes down because your body gets more adept at extracting calories from the food you eat. And typically, exercise activity goes down. Now, you may say, wait, 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 wait. I'm doing more cardio now. Well, assume you kept it the same. Your body actually gets more efficient as you're, as you're dieting. Your body works to get more efficient so you don't starve. So the hour of cardio you do, your body actually burns less calories because it gets more efficient at doing that activity and not burning as many calories to help keep you from starving. Okay, so all these things are going down. BMR and NEAT, probably the biggest two that go down in terms of your total daily caloric output. But if these are going down, well, so originally, if we reduced calories, what we had was, if we reduced calories, this went down, output went up, and we lost body fat. But if these start going down, what happens is, this goes down, energy intake may not go up, it doesn't go up, but it pushes it back to balance, okay? So over time of dieting, this is pushing you back to homeostasis, i.e. your maintenance calories. And now you're not losing weight again. So your maintenance calories is not a set in stone number, it's a sliding scale. So now, what do you do since you're here? Well, you have to either increase your exercise activity or you have to decrease your energy intake again, okay? So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how can you modify your exercise, how can you modify your energy intake in order to keep losing body fat. Guys, if you have any questions about this, please leave a comment below. Uh, like and share, subscribe if you like it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing more of this series and showing you guys the nuts and bolts and the fine details of how to lose fat and also how to keep it off. All right, guys, looking forward to the next episode. I'll see you then.